Empty track is a very popular feature. It has been massively improved with the Mini 4 Pro, adding the capability to draw a path the aircraft will follow while tracking. This feature, renamed Apti Track 360, has also been implemented in the Air 3. Over the past year, firmware updates have modified Apti Track 360 several times. Many users are confused as the tutorial available on the web refers to the first implementation. So, in this video, I will show you how the current version of Apti Track works. Let's start with a new way of selecting a T-Track, introduced by a very recent update. On the left part of the DJI Fly app, there is now a new icon above the one for takeoff. By clicking on it, we enter Focus Track Mode, which includes the three modes at the track Spotlight and Point of Interest. All possible targets on the screen will be identified and a plus sign will appear on each of them to select one. The software recognizes if the target is a person or a car and shows the corresponding icon below. The options available when tracking people are slightly different for the ones for car, as we will see later. Before this firmware update, we had to enable the automatic recognition of target by going to the control tab of setting and selecting subject scanning. This option is no longer present, as it has been made redundant by the new focus track icon. Like in previous versions, an alternative way to access the three mode of focus track is to draw a box around the subject on the screen. In my experience, selecting a target using the plus sign gives more precise results, especially with subject in motion. When entering focus track, an icon shows the three modes. The one enabled by default is Spotlight. To enter a tick track, we must click on the icon on the left or press the C1 button on the remote controller, another new addition. When entering a tick track, the interface differs from the first version of the Mini 4 Pro and Air 3, confusing many users. A second window appears with three modes, Auto, Manual and Parallel. Let's see how they work. Manual mode is selected by default and is used on most occasions. In this mode, the aircraft will try to maintain a constant position compared to the target. On the bottom left, we find a double dial with a white circle that can be moved to specify the aircraft position compared to the target. In the middle, there is an icon of a person. By default, the icon is positioned behind the target, but we can move it by dragging with a finger. I don't find that tracking from behind is particularly interesting. In this case, I've set the icon to track me from the front right, and when I walk in a different direction, the aircraft tries to regain the same relative position as soon as possible. The drone maintains a constant distance and height, but we can use the two sticks of the remote controller to get closer or farther away from the target, or modify the elevation. When the target is a person, the icon on the left has a double dial, the inner one for a closer distance and a lower elevation, and the other one for tracking from farther away and at a higher elevation. If we drag the icon to a different position within the same dial, we will obtain dynamic tracking while maintaining the same altitude and distance. The aircraft will rotate to reach the new position relative to the target. If we drag the icon to a different position on the other dial, the aircraft will reposition itself relative to the target while moving farther away and raising in elevation. In the control tab of the setting, we can access the focus track settings to fine-tune several values. We can select them independently for person or vehicle. In the case of a person, we can specify the horizontal distance from the target for the inner and outer circles. Further down, we can do the same for the height. We have two options for camera motion, I suggest using normal. Then we can enable near ground flight, in which case the aircraft can descend below 2 meters or 6 feet for an interesting point of view, especially when vlogging. 
However, some extra gear is needed in case of obstacles at ground level. When threat in parallel mode, the double wheel for dynamic tracking is not available. The aircraft tracks the target maintaining the same direction, rather than adjusting its position relative to the target. For example, if we set the camera orientation to the north, the aircraft will be always facing north while tracking, regardless of the change of direction of the target. This mode is useful when we want to keep a constant background or the same direction relative to the sun, even when the target changes direction. In my opinion, the name parallel is a bit misleading. It should be called something like background lock or fixed direction. As you can see in this example, the drone follows me, maintaining the camera in the path of the road. When I change direction, it follows me from the back, the side or the front, but the camera is always facing the road. In auto mode, the aircraft tracks the subject while performing different moves, like hold, drone, helix and circle, according to the environment. The resulting footage is a bit random, as we cannot plan the moves, but it can produce at times interesting unexpected results. The new Active Track 360 is a big step forward for tracking compared to previous DJI models when following persons. A further improvement would be the possibility of further tuning the speed of the rotation. I wish it will be added by firmware updates. In the focus track settings, when selecting vehicle instead of person, there is no choice for the minimum and maximum values for distance and height. We are suggested to use the control stick if needed. The dial to the left has only one circle, so the dynamic moves are limited compared to person mode. I suggest enabling fast for camera motion when following cars as normal tend to lose the target even at a relatively low speed. The same three tracking modes are available, normal, auto and parallel. Sadly, I found something annoying, at least for users in Europe. When trying to track cars that are already in motion, most of the time I receive a message stating that due to European regulations, the aircraft must remain within a 50 meter range from the target. This makes it very difficult to track moving vehicles. The only option is to select the target while it is not moving, but even in this case we can only track from close range and low speed. A good alternative is to use Spotlight mode, which offers excellent possibilities for dynamic tracking. Click on this video to watch my video about Spotlight mode with the Mini 4 Pro and the Air 3. And don't forget to hit the like button if you found this video interesting. Thank you.